Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome to week four of our series titled Connect. Everybody say connect. Connect. And in the spirit of connect, turn to somebody next to you and tell them good morning. morning. Turn to somebody else, tell them good morning. And tell the third person you look good. You're laughing like, I didn't mean that. He told me to say it. I'm going to just say it because he's in charge, but I don't believe it. If you don't know what this Connect series is about, we're talking all about the importance of connecting to each other, not only at church, but really as Christians in general, the importance of a community. Who's ever heard the phrase, it takes a village? You know, like it takes a village to do what? It's like to raise up a child, it takes a village. By a show of hands, parents, who here has ever been in a jam with your kids and somebody was able to help you out? On the other side, who's ever been able to help out somebody in a jam? So we see in community there's times where we're going to need help and times where we are able to help those who are around us. That is the beauty of community. And this week as we're talking about this Connect series, we've said it a little bit each week. It's going to be through the lens of computer networks, of IT, information technology. I promise you do not need to be an expert to get from this message today. We're going to explain everything and make it real clear. So for this week, I want to ask a question. Who here loves to take pictures on your phone? Now, keep your hand up if you love to take pictures. Only keep your hands up if you are a grandparent. I'm about to come for the grandparents now. Grandparents, your baby is the cutest thing in the whole world, right? She's ready to fight. Mine, mine, not theirs, mine. You like to take pictures of everything, right, grandparents? You say, oh my goodness, this is Johnny's 50,000th step. Yes. Oh my goodness, the first time using a fork, snap. Oh my goodness, he's breathing on his own, Johnny. It's like, mom, he's always a, leave my baby alone, right? We have this thing where we love to take pictures of our children to see these grandchildren, especially to have these memories, right? A picture is worth a thousand. Words, you want to connect with these stories that we have in our phone. And how many of you know, and not just grandparents, now and everybody, that nowadays your phone runs out of storage really fast? Like someone's like, come on, take a picture. And you pose for the picture. They go, hold on, I need to delete some photos. Just like, okay. Oh, I can't delete that one. Not the wedding. Not Johnny's 50,000th step. And you're there and we have this problem. We need more space. There used to be a day where if you needed more storage, you simply had to delete stuff off of your phone. You can get an SD card, but even an SD card might run out of storage. But now Apple and Google have this amazing thing known as cloud storage. Everybody say cloud Cloud. storage. And if you have no idea about anything with technology, just think of cloud storage like borrowing somebody else's memory. You're borrowing somebody else's space. So if you've ever had, let's say, a family reunion and everyone takes photos and you want to see all those photos, right? There used to be a time where everyone would have to text each other a photo of what's going on. Here's my photos, and here's this person's photos, and here's this person's photos. But nowadays, we can just upload it to the the cloud. So this cloud is a place where we can take everyone's photos and bring them together. And I think we have a picture of that, of what it looks like. So this is your phone, and that's Pastor Mike's phone. We're at the same event, and we both take different photos, and we upload it to the 
cloud. So think of the cloud simply for today's sermon as a place where we can put our memories together. These stories, these photos, they all live in one place. And like we said, a picture is worth a thousand words. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a picture in the past that reminded you of a time when you were really going through it? Where you see the photo and you're smiling in the photo, but you know inside yourself, in that photo I was dying inside. In that photo I was struggling. In that photo I was completely ready to quit. In that photo I was distraught and I swore I would never make it. And the reason why I want to talk about this cloud today and this idea of photos and stories and memories is there are times when we're all going to struggle. Who here knows that life is difficult? It's difficult, right? But in the same way that we can look at a photo in the past and realize that God was able to bring us from where we were stuck to where we are now, some of us might feel stuck today. Right now is that photo. If I took a picture right now of the whole room, there are people in that photo that are struggling. There are people here today that want to quit. And as we're talking about connect and talking about the cloud, my hope today is that when we look at the cloud, the memories, the stories of other people who have went before you and seen God deliver them from their struggles, that you would leave encouraged today. That you would know that God is here for you. That as you trust in God, that he will bring you through this moment of struggle. My hope today is that as I'm preaching and giving this message, that you wouldn't leave here discouraged. That you would leave encouraged. That you would once again remember that God is for you and that he's here right beside you. Today I want to connect us to the spiritual cloud. Everyone say the spiritual cloud. This is the place where the stories of faith are uploaded. And the main scripture for today is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, where it says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Everybody say cloud of witnesses. It says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. He then goes on to say this, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the, hand, at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. And here we see the reason why we see all this. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The goal of today's sermon is that we would not grow weary and lose heart. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to hear your word. God, I pray that our hearts would be like good soil, that we'd be ready to receive what your word has in store for us. And I pray, Lord, that as we place our faith and our trust in you, that even if life looks like there's no way out, that we would trust that you are the way maker, God, that you are a miracle worker. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the author of Hebrews He ends that little passage by saying, the point of what I'm saying is so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And that one sentence really summarizes what the recipients of this book of Hebrews is going through. This book of Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians who were struggling. They were really going through it. They really wanted to quit because they were being persecuted, really, for placing their faith in Jesus Christ. Here's what the other, the Orthodox, the traditional Jews were saying. In modern terms, y'all fake. Y'all fake. Jesus shows up and all of a sudden, you want to turn on our entire faith. Those Hebrews, you're fake for that. And this church knew that they were doing what was right, but it felt almost as if this struggle is too much for us to bear. We are being persecuted for placing our trust in Jesus. 
And what the author of Hebrews does in this book is he reassures these Jewish Christians, he motivates these Jewish Christians by saying, look at the faith of those who have come before you. He's saying, look at the stories of those who've come before you. Or for today's sermon, they're saying, look at the cloud. He's saying, look at those who came before you. And we see in Hebrews chapter 11, what we call the hall of faith. And this is listing out the stories of many Bible heroes. And we see for a few examples in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel brought a better offering than Cain did. Verse 7, by faith, Noah, when warned about the things not yet seen, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, he offered Isaac as a sacrifice. By faith, the people, the Israelites, they passed through the Red Sea as on on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Verse 31, by faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. So we have all these Jewish Christians who are struggling in their faith. And they want to quit. They're at a spot when they're saying, this is too difficult to keep pushing forward. And the author is saying, wait, before you quit, look what Abel was able to do by faith. Look what Noah was able to do by faith. Look what Abraham was able to do. Look what the Israelites were able to do. Look what Rahab was able to do. It was their faith that was able to carry them through their tribulations. It was their faith in God that was the one thing that stopped them from quitting when they wanted to quit. And what the author of Hebrews is doing here is he's saying, I need to connect you guys to the cloud of witnesses. He's saying, I need you guys to see the stories of those who came before you because now you're in the story. Now it's your turn to place your trust in God. And now picture this. He says it, that they were able to do it before, and now we're sitting here in the year 2024 reading the story of those who are receiving this book of Hebrews, and guess what? Now we're in that story. Now we are the ones who need to be encouraged sometimes. Now we are the ones who want to quit. And what the author of Hebrews says is, before you quit, look at those who came before you. So this sermon is kind of weird talking about connect. We're talking about connecting to those who aren't even here alive today. In the room, they are, they're, God is God of the living. But I'm talking about in this room today, that we are connecting to the stories and the faith of those who came before Think about it. What would it look like if King David, if he had a cloud that he can upload his story to? We have what was written in the pages of scripture, but what would his vlog look like? Down in the tent around the bonfire by himself the night before fighting Goliath. So it's like, hey guys, I I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. I really feel that God is calling me to go and fight this giant Goliath. And God, he was with me when I fought a lion. And God was with me when I fought a bear. So that same God that delivered me then, I figure he'll deliver me tomorrow when I fight Goliath. So that I might be afraid and he might be bigger and stronger, I'm going to do it. What would Abraham's story look like if it was a vlog? I prayed so long for one son. And God finally gave me Isaac. And he's asking me for him back. How could I possibly lay down my one and only son? You know what the book of Hebrews says? Abraham, this is how he talked. But the God that brought me all the way to this point, I figure he can even raise my son from the dead. Because he's that powerful. When we look at these stories, and the author of Hebrews is looking at these stories, he's saying these stories in the past give you the strength and the confidence and the faith to live now. Because now really is where the struggle is at. Right now is where things tend to get difficult. And right now is where God is bringing encouragement to all of us today. 
We see that all these stories where the people placed their faith and their confidence in God that we're, we're pulling from the cloud today, that these stories lay the foundation for Hebrews chapter 12, which we read. He says in chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, doesn't that sound different now? Oh, the cloud of witnesses isn't just a bunch of people. It's a one idea that those who place their faith in God, that God delivers them. That God, that God will put them out of this misery, that he'll bring them to where he has them to be. He says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Exactly what he's saying is they had their turn and they were successful and now it's your turn. Family church, guess what? Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn. Look at someone next to you and tell them it's your turn. Look at somebody else and tell them it's your turn. We see that this cloud of witnesses is a spiritual concept that the author wants the people to be connected to. And I know at social media we are very connected to what's happening in the world today. But I want to encourage you to be connected to the stories of faith. Be connected to the faith of those who are around you. Raise your hand if you know that life can be hard to do on your own. There's going to be times when we need encouragement and being connected to those around us, being connected in faith will be one of those things that brings us life and helps us to move forward. We have here as a church and as Christians, we have this thing known as the Bible. And what this Bible is, it's almost like an upload of all these stories of faith. It's an upload of everything that we need to know what it looks like to live lives as Christians. And we have a picture to kind of show this. So we're here and we look to this Bible. And the story of Abraham was uploaded to the cloud. And the story of Noah was uploaded to the cloud. And the story of Abel was uploaded to the cloud. And the story of Rahab was uploaded to the cloud. So because these people trusted in God and lived out what was right in front of them, we get to benefit from their stories. And what I love about this Connect series is that today, we also have an opportunity to share our stories with those who are around us. And that's what Pastor John Mark spoke on last week. He says, yes, I'm preaching, but I need you to preach to me. I need to hear your stories. I need to know the times of when you were provided for. Because it, it's so funny, we used to have a, in the membership video, kind of the story of our church from 1982. You know what I think of every time I think of a story of God providing? I think of Miss Lynn, who was my children's pastor. She says this story where she sat down and they had zero food. They had no money for food. And she sat down and she put, I think it was peanut butter on a hot dog bread. One and she cut it into quarters, and that was all the food they had. And then someone knocked on the door, a neighbor, and said, hey, we're eating healthy. We've got a ton of food that we're getting rid of here. So if there's ever a moment when I feel like God's not going to come through, God's not going to provide, I don't think of a Bible verse, I think of the peanut butter hot dog. Without fail. And this is the power of the cloud of witnesses. A witness is somebody that has seen something for themselves. And he's saying, these people have witnessed it, and now it's your turn. You're going to see it too. So run with perseverance because you are going to get to the spot where you see God come through just for you. We see that the cloud or the stories of those who have gone before us can give us the strength and the inspiration we need to face our daily challenges. That it can give us the confidence to run our race with purpose. 
And you might have noticed some people that when they pray, it's like, why do you always pray with these Bible stories? So someone's afraid, right? And they don't, they don't just pray, God, help me not to be afraid. It's usually a grandmother. I love church grandmothers. It, it, it's not just praying, All right, I'm a fear. It's, Lord, I thank you that just as Moses was afraid and he was able to walk in to Egypt and deliver a message to your people, may I walk forward in my fear. It's not just God help me to lay down this thing that I love. It's God just as Abraham put the thing he loved most on an altar before you. God, may I lay down what I value most for your glory. Yes. Why, do, why do grandmas pray that way? It's connecting to the cloud of witnesses. It's saying, you are the God of Moses. You are the God of Abraham and you are my God. Yes. And if you did it for them, you can do it for me. This is the power of the cloud of witnesses. What I love about the book of Hebrews is it's kind of funny because it's so exciting. All the stories we just read and the author of Hebrews says Jesus is better than all of that. It's like, whoa, you just went through the whole movie telling me how great they are. He says the new character, better than all of them. Better than the angels. Better than Moses. Joshua, he, he gave these people a temporary rest. He couldn't give them a full rest. He's like, Jesus did what Moses couldn't. Jesus did what Joshua couldn't. Jesus did what Abraham couldn't. So this author of Hebrews is saying in verse 2, fix your eyes on the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus, the pioneer from the beginning and the perfecter, the very end. He's saying Jesus is the one that all of these stories were, were giving us hints of what's to come. Jesus is the one who brings it all together. So all of us who've placed our faith in these amazing stories we heard as little Jewish children, we have the better version, and he was just in front of our eyes. He's saying, if all those stories were enough, how much more when God himself is right in front of you living it out? We have the perfect example in Jesus. As miraculous and amazing as these stories were, Jesus is better. As amazing as their faith was, we see that Jesus is the perfect example of faith. He says, look at these stories and run with endurance. Does anyone here like to run? Does anyone here hate to run? And then a little kid goes, catch me. And you about 30 seconds in, he's like, we're done. We're done. I'm faster than you. I'm going to sprint you down. I right, got you. We're done. He says run with endurance because it can be easy to sprint for a second. So, all right, I'm going to be 100% Jesus. Oh, shoot. This is hard. All right, I'm going to quit. It's like, no. It's like, slow down. Run with endurance. It's that slow steady relationship it's that slow steady relationship nobody in these stories just woke up without any reason to move forward we see with king david he had a slow and steady relationship he didn't just jump to goliath he says to goliath he's like the same god that delivered me from the lion and from the bear that that's the god that is going to deliver me from you. And we see that in these stories that God gives these people good reason to believe him. Faith is not believing with no reason. Faith is believing because God's evidence is overwhelming. Faith is believing because God has made himself clear and made himself known. In the same way that these people in these stories could upload their stories to the cloud and we can benefit from those stories. 
I want us to understand that in the spiritual cloud, for those, like the song said, all who went before us and all who will believe that they sing the song of ages to the Lamb, they sing all the way from the beginning, all the way from Abraham to 24, 2024, we all sing the same song. Amen. We're all singing the song of our faith in God. Today we have the ability to pull from the spiritual cloud. So how do we do this, Pastor Josh? Number one, log into the cloud. You know, all of our phones have access to the cloud, right? But not all of us are logged in. Some of us, our phones are full. Every picture we take, we got to delete one. And Apple's like, 99 cents a month. I'll give you 50 gigabytes. And we're constantly deleting, we're constantly adding and constantly deleting when we have access to the cloud, but we just have to log in. Cloud storage often requires a username and password. And as believers, username Jesus, password Jesus. We have access to the spiritual cloud today. Every one of us has access to these stories that can awaken faith. And maybe you're here today and you're saying, well, I'm not a believer in Jesus. So great that it works for you, but it's not going to work for me. Well, let's read the story of one of the people in the hall of faith named Rahab. Joshua 2.8, it says that before the spies lay down for the night, she, being Rahab, she went up to the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Verse 10, we have heard. Everybody say, we have heard. She says, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. When we heard it, of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. What did Rahab have to work with? She had a rumor. She had a rumor. And she heard one rumor. She heard one message of God. And the author of Hebrews later on tells us she placed her faith in what she had heard. She placed her faith in the message that she heard. And this is the story that unites everybody in the hall of faith. That God spoke and they trusted in God's word. We have a Bible full of these stories. And Rahab had one rumor. Say this with me. Say a rumor is enough. And you best believe that if a rumor is enough to awaken faith, that Jesus is Lord over all, that the, the scriptures and those we have around us in God's presence, we have so much evidence of God being here. We just got to log into the cloud. Point number two, we get ready to run. Everybody say that with me. Say, get ready, get ready. to run. It says this, therefore, since we are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. Here this author, as he's talking about running forward, he brings up a very important concept when it comes to travel. I have a picture here on the screen. We've got a Honda Civic and... We got, we gonna say this Optimus Prime. I don't know the name of this or the maker of the model. Let me ask you, out of these two cars, which car has the more powerful engine? The truck. Which car, if you needed to drag a boulder that was, let's say, 10,000 pounds, which one are you gonna use? You could use a truck. Now let me ask you, in a race on the highway, who's gonna win a race? the Honda Civic. But I thought you said the truck was more powerful. This truck is carrying a whole lot of weight. And sometimes when we talk about moving forward, the problem is not that we don't have the power, because we do have the power. Sometimes we're carrying a weight that we're not meant to be carrying. Sometimes God says, listen, Honda Civic, you have all the power you need 
but you're trying to pull a trailer that Jesus laid down his life for already. He dealt with the sin problem. And you're trying to carry that weight that only God himself could carry. So he sends himself to carry it so that we could be a nice hot Civic. So that we can run the race with endurance. As Christians, we do not have a horsepower problem. The prayer is not, God, I need more of your Holy Spirit and then I can live right. No. You've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. A lot of times we're carrying burdens that we're not meant to carry. Our prayer is not, God, give me more. I need more power. It's, Lord, may I trust you to lay down these weights, these burdens that I've been carrying. Point number three, we fix our eyes on Jesus. We fix our eyes on Jesus. Verse two, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. What I love about Jesus and seeing the story of Jesus here in the book of Hebrews is it really makes you see how all those people in those moments that they were like little snapshots of what Jesus would ultimately do for us. The story and all those people in the hall of faith is that they lived their life, they heard a word from God, they shared God's message, and then they died in faith. They lived their life, they had faith, they shared the message, and they died in faith. But we see at the very end that Jesus, he lives a life, he shares God's message, he dies, but three days later, he says, oh, I'm not like them. He said, I have power over death, hell, and the grave. And the author of Hebrews, he goes on to say, he's like, all the people that I just talked about, they didn't get to see the promise to come. They saw it as like in a far off day, like seeing something on a horizon. But we're right here at the moment. So how much more are we equipped to run this race with perseverance if Jesus is right here before our eyes? The hard part with this message is not the question of, is it the best thing to do to connect to this cloud of witnesses and to be connected? The hard question is, is it worth it? I want to ask you, is it worth it? Because this is a very difficult thing. Because we can know the right thing to do, but it not be worth it. For example, I've heard a lot of times that cardio is healthy. Every time I pull into the drive-thru, I've heard supposedly that fast food is really bad for you. And that salads are really good. I know, but guess what, baby? It ain't worth it to me. Let me get that number nine. Let me get that Coke. For me right now, it's like I know all the benefits of eating healthy, but the reality is it ain't worth it for me. I want to eat the food that I want to eat. And here's the point that I'm making. When it comes to placing our faith with Jesus, it's worth it because in the example of the food, right, I get some joy from eating the foods I'm not supposed to eat, so to speak. But we understand with Jesus, it's like the best meal ever. So when we, I say, is it worth it? I'm saying you're not settling for Jesus, you're upgrading your life. We see in this story of the hall of faith that it wasn't about being perfect. It was at the end of the day, placing your faith and your trust in God. If you look at this story, Abraham offers his wife to another man. Moses murdered another man. As Hebrews also want to bring up, Rahab was a prostitute. Like, bro, give her a break. Jacob stole his brother's birthright. 
We see that Gideon asked over and over again, all right, God, you need to prove yourself. Prove yourself. We see that David murdered, that he stole another man's wife. We see that Samuel, he didn't raise his children properly. But we still see here that through the authors of Scripture, through the Holy Spirit, that God's focus was not on, here's the mistakes that they made. God's focus in Hebrews was not to expose the mistakes they made. He said, these are the people that placed their faith and their trust in me. And we know these people weren't perfect. And that's okay because Jesus was. And the message of Christianity is not that you have to be perfect on your own. It's because we can't be perfect, let's place our faith and our trust in the one who is. And as we're closing out today, I want to make give an opportunity for anyone who says, I haven't yet placed my faith or my trust in Jesus. We pray this together, and it's called a salvation prayer. And you can repeat after me. Say, dear God, I come to you today just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I believe that you died and rose for me. Come into my heart, come into my life to change me and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to FamilyChurchNY.com to take your next steps.